Hello friends. If you are a regular viewer of our videos, you know that I've been limited in my ability to do photography because I've had a couple of back surgeries this year. I recently shared a video explaining that, and if you are interested in watching it, I will add a link to that video in the description of this video. So while I have been able to get out a few times with my camera, I've been largely exploring other elements of photography. Today, I am trying out one photo editing software that I have only used minimally in the past and a new version of some filters that I have used a lot in the past. I recently received the download keys from DxO for DxO Photo Lab 6 and the latest Nick filter set. I accepted them because a lot of viewers request editing videos, but I also wanted to try Photo Lab and Raymond and I have always loved the Nick filters. In fact, the photo shoot that I want to re-edit today from 2014 was originally edited with the Nick filters, just a much older version. For a little background, I've been primarily using Adobe Lightroom Classic with the occasional foray into Photoshop. And for many years, I have used Lightroom because it certainly meets my needs and it's easy to use, but I've been really busy with projects. And when I edit, I need to edit quickly. I've tried other software here and there, but I always default to Lightroom because it's, it's the easiest because it's what I'm used to. So while I'm not glad that I've had back surgeries, I am glad that I have the opportunity and the time to try out some new software today. Before we jump into the software, I want to thank the sponsor of this portion of the video, KEH. KEH buys and sells used photography equipment, cameras, lenses, lighting, tripods, monopods, bags, lens caps, <laughs> a huge variety of gear. Raymond and I have used them for both buying and selling gear since before they were a sponsor here. If we want something like a vintage manual focus lens for our film cameras, KEH is our first stop. If we want to sell something, again, KEH is our first stop. In fact, since Nikon recently announced their new 180 to 600 millimeter lens for Z mount, we will be selling this Nikon F mount 200 to 500 millimeter to KEH soon. Anyway, I am a KEH affiliate and I do have codes for you. If you sell your used gear to KEH and use my code, you can get a bonus on top of the amount you would normally receive. Or if you are purchasing gear, you can use my code to receive a discount. You using my links also helps let KEH know to continue supporting this channel, which helps us to continue creating free videos like this one. Thank you to KEH for continuing to work with us. Let's take a look at the photos we are going to re-edit. These were captured in Grafton, which is a ghost town in Utah, not too far from Zion National Park. In fact, this was a trip where Raymond and I were staying at Zion, but Raymond had found Grafton online before the trip and we had planned to take an evening and visit. The photo shoot was my brainchild. <laughs> We didn't really know what we would see when we arrived, but I imagined hanging out amongst the broken down town as a ghostly presence that was pulling you in to the photographs. The look I was going for was antique. <laughs> Those old yellowed prints that you may have seen from like the early 1900s. I wanted a dreaminess and a lightness to them, though maybe also a softness because the intention of the set of photos was to tell the story of a ghostly presence. But what about today? I'm re-editing them. Do I want to tell the same kind of stories? Do I want to just edit them to be standalone portraits? I'm really exploring Photo Lab and re-exploring the Nick filter set. Let's see what we come up with. Let's get into the software. My plan is to do some preliminary edits in Photo Lab here, but then send the photos over to Nick for a filter. Incidentally, I primarily edited the photos in Nick Silver Effects the first time around, including any selective adjustments I needed to make. Actually, I should mention here that you can use the Nick filters with Photo Lab like I am, or also with Lightroom and Photoshop. 
A couple things you'll notice at the bottom of the screen are the photos I edited back in 2017, along with the unedited JPEGs. Yes, I said JPEGs. Incidentally, we used the Nikon D800 and the 85mm f1.8 lens. Here's where we get to the Nick collection, that's super convenient. And up here are some basic exposure adjustments. And then it looks like these are some features that just make you more efficient. DxO Smart Lighting balances the light and Clearview Plus looks like it is similar to Dehaze in Lightroom. I really like that option for landscapes especially. Uh, let's try the Smart Lighting. Oh, that's nice. But let's undo and keep exploring. I can't be done already. I I see other adjustments that I would expect to see like contrast and color and you know this is all straightforward. And then here's crop uh, and this photo is a bit crooked so I want to adjust that. And I see more options up here including local adjustments. This is where you can choose areas of the image for editing. And I do want to brighten myself up a bit. We didn't have any lighting with us at the time so brightening me will help me stand out from the background. And we have options for how to select the area to edit. I'll paint on where I want to adjust. You're going to see that I'm not very careful when I do this kind of a thing. I'm, I'm not gonna make any huge adjustments, so I just don't need to be overly precise. Oh, this works similarly to how I remember the neck filters working. After you choose your selection, these options pop up. I love it. It's just a little bit of an increase of exposure on me. Just, you know, hanging out in high-heeled boots in a cemetery. <laughs> no big deal, right? Okay, I'm ready to open the image in the Nick filters. And I know I don't want to edit these in monochrome again, but let me just show you silver effects because I love it. There are different filters along the left, but each one has adjustments on the right, including the local adjustments like I did in Photolab. And there are options within options here. <laughs> but like I said, I do want to choose a color filter, so let's go back. Okay, before we look at the Nick color filter options, I can't help but explore DxO Film Pack here. Ooh, cinematic. And yeah, unsurprisingly, there are many ways to customize the look. I used to use presets and filters so much when I did these types of concept photo shoots, and this is definitely making me want to get back to experimenting with them. But getting back on track, let's go back in the history to before I made these changes and let's check out Nick analog effects. We'll keep with the vintage look, but I want to go for some color. Here's antique blur, which is interesting. Oh yeah, I remember this option. You can mimic dirt and scratches. And I would actually, I would generally turn this option off when I used these filters in the past. And the light leaks too, though I do like the idea of these and I, I do have some thoughts now that I'm seeing these again for some future videos using these more experimental options. Okay, blue faded. I like this one, but let's, let's look a little bit more. Um, burnt edges. This is an example of one that utilizes light leaks and even a frame. And that is another option in here. You can change the type of frame around the image. There are just so many filters here to get you started. It's insane. Um, I, I just want to go back to blue faded for our base. I, that one really struck me right away. And look, we can change the film type here. These options will alter the color. I'm going to stick with the cool tones. We've got one, two, and three here, and I'm going to go with number one. I enjoy how my blue jeans are emphasized, but they aren't super saturated. And I enjoy that these colors made it so that I stand out amongst the surroundings. And you can see that we actually have an option enabled in the dirt and scratches category. I just said I usually disable these, but I really like how this photo looks, so we're going to keep it. I certainly could keep playing all day in here, but I already like this look a lot uh, and I'm going to stick with it. I've certainly only scratched the surface today. I'm looking forward to trying this out more and with different types of photos. I have a few projects coming up that I will edit using Photolab. I do even have a couple of portrait projects, but 
One of the projects that I have coming up is even astrophotography. So I'm gonna have some ample time to experiment with this software and see how I like it. And you know what? I have plans to even try some other editing software. So stay tuned to this channel if you're interested in photo editing. And now I'm gonna edit some more of these photos the same way and I'll be right back. All right, what do you think of both my new edits and the software? I expected everything I saw in Nick. Like I said, I've used it for many years, probably at least a decade, since nearly the beginning of this channel. And I know a lot of you would have recognized it too, because I know a lot of you use it. I really like the filters and I will definitely start using it more often again. I also like Photolab. I wanna explore it some more now that I have the time to spend learning the controls. I will definitely be exploring the options like Film Pack in Photolab and the rest of the Nick Packs as well. I kind of forgot how much I liked them. I will add links to them in the description of this video so that you can check them out. I'm not sure if I came up with a new story for the new set of photographs. I just really liked that look. Bringing out the blues in such a dull brownish red surrounding but not super saturating everything, just amping up the contrast, but keeping everything still pretty soft. I dig the blue faded filter and color effects. I don't know, do you have a story for these? Do leave your thoughts in the comments. I've asked at least a few questions, but here's one more. What editing software do you use and why? I love to hear from you and I do try to be active in the comments for at least a couple of days after my videos go live. Thank you for watching.